All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll introduce, introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Adam Monsonatis, and I'm part of the research team of Western Digital. And uh, I focus more on system software, so user space, kernel, uh, of emerging hardware that we might have. So there's, a, there's also a hardware team in research, and they're looking at next gener generation devices. And so uh, I'm more on the team of looking at uh, if we have these devices, how would we expose them uh, through the kernel or through, through user space? So how would the OS interact with these applications? And so today, what I'm going to be talking about is called the heterogeneous memory map, right? And uh, I apologize for on the schedule, uh, we called it UMAP. Uh, and so we're going through sort of this naming process right now. We don't know the exact name we're going to call it yet, but uh, we're uh, in process of this. Uh, but the main goal of the project was that uh, if we have emerging uh, non volatile memories and we know enough about the underlying technologies to know there might be read write uh, asymmetry. Symmetries. There could also be um, uh, endurance issues. So we are pretty well aware of the properties of some of these devices. And so we started thinking, what would be a nice framework to expose these applications? And uh, another trend that we looked at that we're seeing more in, on the, on the uh, uh, happening right now is the demand for large memory footprints. Right, and so you you know, like the given the previous talk with uh, SAP Hana and their um, careful memory management, uh, things like this are are um, very. We we see there's some trend there where applications want to leverage tons of system memory and have finer grain control of it. And so this is where this project all started out. And uh, so I'll start going here. And I, I encourage, and maybe not in the middle of the presentation, but uh, I am encouraging open discussion. So, so maybe when we get towards the end, uh, any questions, I have, I'll, I'll have no problem going back on slides and, and we can talk about assumptions and where we're at, uh, things like that. I, I'd like it to be a pretty open discussion. Okay. So... Uh, the first step that we sort of got to was that uh, w what are ways that we could uh, extend the available memory in in a system, right? And so, you know, one one way, right, is is that the kind of classic way. Uh, but I would um, take a step back here and say that swap is one way of giving you a larger uh, memory footprint, right? Is that you take a block storage device and then uh, under memory pressure, it'll take pages and move them to this block storage device. And all applications could potentially benefit from this larger address space. Uh, and it effectively extends the total amount of memory available. But it's, in, in my opinion, its main purpose is to deal with situations when you're almost out of memory, right? That its main goal was to give a little break uh, to applications that hopefully things will get better, right? It was a, a last minute resort, or I won't say last minute, but the last resort kind of situation, right? Like it, it effectively allows applications to have a larger uh, uh, memory f uh, footprints, right? But in essence, it's only for these uh, dire situations. And, and so I, I think this is, uh, I, I keep seeing more and more activity of people wanting to optimize swap and looking in this uh, direction, but I'm a little cautious in there just because of what, it, what I believe it's originally designed for, right? Is that, that it wasn't generally de de designed for memory extension. So that's one sort of uh, way of getting these devices and make them look as memory. And this, these have to be block devices. So <clears throat> another way of doing this, and, and so swap is a very general approach where, where uh, an application is not, not really opting in, right? Is that it's just saying this is another uh, available memory resource. Uh, another uh, uh, way of doing this is that uh, you can actually M map, right? And so you can take some block device and M map it, and then on demand pages will move into the page cache. And uh, you know, uh, I I didn't go through and look at all the tuning parameters, things like that. But it's a quite complex system, and there's a, there's a lot to it. But uh, largely, from for what I can tell, it's not completely application controlled. I, I did see uh, maybe you could use M advice to flush out particular uh, ranges for for that are backed by a certain file. So there is some tuning that that you could do there. But but largely, I think it's a a, a set it a, a, it will consume as much memory as possible and then uh, deal with pressure, memory pressure as it happens, right? And uh, again, another thing that 
I, I see as somewhat of a challenge is that this page cache uh, is a global resource, right? Is that it's, it's this global pool of, of memory pages and uh, under memory pressure from the system, it can be, be pushed out. And so, so this is another way that, that the application can see a large virtual memory footprint when not having the physical resources. Okay, so. <clears throat> So the another approach, and and so this was sort of talked about uh, yesterday, is that if if your device is uh, shows up on the memory bus, then you can do an MBAP with a DAX device, right? And so this is interesting in the fact that when you have your page fault, uh, you you map this device into the application's address space, so you have this direct mapping to it. And then once this page table entry is set, then your loads and stores come directly from this DAX device. And uh, of course, this is nice because then you eliminate any software overheads, right? Once that mapping is set, uh, and so this, this can, can lead to the lowest latencies possible for a given uh, memory or storage device. But, and, and this has to be, it has to be byte addressable, that's another thing. Uh, one big con in my mind is that if you bypass the page cache entirely, then you get no advantage, right? And so uh, I think this is very relevant when you're talking about like the Apache pass dims and that you have, like if you want it in the memory mode, that you have to pair it with a, a, a dim of a certain size. And so these kind of restrictions or um, uh, working models, uh, I, I think it, it shows that there you do need these DRAM caches and maybe, so that approach seems to be uh, hardware assisted caching, right? And so you're giving up some sort of resource Source. And so I think it's clear that there is an advantage to using DRAM as cache, even for DAX capable devices, right? And and you 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 just think about it in say the like asymmetry that we're talking about, right? Is that uh, with the Apache Pass that the read latency is quite good, but then on the write latency uh, it's very different, right? And so these devices aren't exactly DRAM replacements. And I think that's what I'm sort of getting at and why I sort of went down this path, right? Is that if someone made a DAX device that had the exact same characteristics of, of DRAM, then I would say, then there's nothing I need to do, right? Is that DAX is the perfect solution in, in that case. And there's some issues with uh, dealing with errors, things like that, but I think it's a nice model, right? Is that you use the file system to carve out the namespace and then you MMAP directly these files files and they get put in your uh, application's virtual address space. So I think this is a reasonable approach if the the NV memory is is very close to to DRAM latencies on read and write and also in endurance, right? And if you don't have um, an NV memory that has these characteristics, then I think there's something else to be done. Okay. <clears throat> so that uh, gets me to what I'm looking at. And so uh, I'll sort of just uh, put a bullet point there, right? Is that uh, this, uh, we call this heterogeneous memory mapping. And uh, I want to say it's the best of both worlds, but you know, there's the, the sort of uh, parentheses in there that says we're getting there, right? Is that I, I think I had this vision of what it could be and we started going down that path and we're not completely there. And I'll, I'll make that clear of what we have and what we don't have. And so this slide here is the, the I guess I would say the long-term sort of dreamy approach of everything that we would like to have. Uh, and we're not exactly there yet, but there's a couple of interesting things to talk about here. And so if you look at this graph, the uh, key thing here is that now, uh, or, or my, my graphic here, is that now there's this sort of mixed mapping here, right? Is that I want to have this case where sometimes my application is mapped directly th to the DAX device. And you could think about uh, the access patterns, right? Is if you're doing random reads of small areas, which is completely reasonable with something that's DRAM, uh, you will get in some big trouble if you're doing this through something like the page cache, right? Is that you're dealing with 4K at a time and you have to shuffle it back and forth. So DAX approach for these kind of workloads makes a lot of sense, right? And so, but if you have a device that's not quite as fast as